Thanks, Anna. Well, the NAACP released a statement on the midterm elections. The only problem, it made no mention of the wins of Mia Love and Tim Scott. Those are two black candidates who won in places no black Republican ever has. The NAACP st statement read, in part, the election was not about who won, but rather the citizens who lost the right to participate. Whatever that means. Well, now RNC spokesman Raffi Williams is slamming that organization. He tweeted this. Can we take a moment to understand how the NAACP didn't congratulate the first black person ever elected to both the House and the Senate? Well, Raffi Williams joins us now for more. Raffi, thanks a lot for coming on this morning. Thanks for having me. So I'm a little baffled as to why I thought the NAACP's whole role was to keep track of stuff like this and to jump in on the side of people like Tim Scott or Mia Love. Why didn't they? Well, I'm just as surprised as you are, but I think it's because there's a partisan bent to what they're doing. They should have taken the time to congratulate Tim Scott for being the first black senator since Reconstruction elected in the South, Mia Love for being the first black Republican congressman, woman, and Will Hurd for being the first black congressman from Texas. These are things that they should acknowledge because they supposedly are for the advancement of all black people, and they should acknowledge uh, achievements when we are at higher office. Yeah, Congressman Lack Heard, by the way, is, is booked on this show tomorrow. Uh, we're happy to say no. So the NAACP started as a group opposed to lynching. Good for them. A hundred years later, though, they just seem like an adjunct uh, to a political party. Is it, I mean, have they outlived their usefulness? Well, I think they could find a useful place in society today, but they're looking for it right now. You know, they did great work in the 50s and 60s, but right now when the racial lines aren't black and white like they used to be and there's more gray and ambiguity to it, they're still trying to figure out how they play. Look, we can have a discussion about policy, but I believe that Republican policies help move the ball forward. When you talk about school choice, we talk about job training programs, we talk about Rand Paul's economic freedom zones in these cities. But the seem to continually support the policies that have failed and produced high unemployment rates in the black community, almost double the national average. You're talking about high crime rates, you're talking about black and black crime. These are things that they're not addressing. Instead, they're trying to attack people who are addressing these issues. So you said it's no longer a black and white situation in this country. That's progress, isn't it? I mean, we don't want a country that's dramatically polarized along clear racial lines. Well, I agree completely. It's a lot of progress. We still have ways to go. I'm not going to say that everything's honky-dory here, but we've made such great progress as a country, and I think the NAACP he, CP needs to acknowledge the progress we've made and understand where the country sits today in terms of what progress we still have. But, you know, there's no way that the battles of the 50s and 60s still should be fought by the NAACP, and they're trying to fight those battles. Well, yeah, because it's not 1955 <laughs> here, uh, as someone should tell Eric Holder, too. But, I mean, look, honestly, yeah. you know as well as I do, this is all a threat. Progress is a threat to the NAACP. I mean, they make money, and they make a lot of money by claiming that it's not changed since 1955, right? Well, look, I mean, I think that if they accomplish their goal of racial equality in this country, there is no use for the NAACP anymore. And I, I don't know if that scares them or what, but right now they need, I think they need to start acknowledging both sides of the spectrum and really celebrate the achievements of black Americans like Mia Love, Tim Scott, and Will Hurd. Raffi Williams, joining us from Washington. Thanks a lot for coming on this morning. Thank you very much, Tucker. Coming up. Every